Okay, you guys, so now that I have had breakfast and am at least partially caffeinated, we have a very full day of plant chores to get done. The list that we're gonna be working on is quite long, as you can see. I'm not sure if we're gonna get everything done today that's on this list or not. We're just gonna see how far we can get and hopefully we can get everything done. And I was actually thinking that the first thing we might do is go around and just do all of the cuttings for the plants that need trimming and propagating first. But then I realized I might not actually have enough available propagation vessels unless we pot up some of the water propagations that need to be potted up first. And there are two that need to be potted up. So I think we are gonna do that first. Then we'll do the cuttings that need to be done and we'll get those into water to start propagating. And then we'll just go from there. Cause honestly, you guys, it, it's just a lot. And I, 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 I don't even know what order we're gonna do it in. It's just a little bit overwhelming right now. So let's just get started. Okay, so if you guys recall when we had trimmed the micans recently, I guess it hasn't been that recently now, but that was like the last video where we actually like cut plants. And we already potted up some of the cuttings, but I told you in that video where we potted them up for some reason, they weren't all rooting at the same rate. And I still have like, I don't know, six or seven of them that haven't gotten roots at all. But we do have enough that now have more roots going on that we can actually pot up a full like four inch pot of them. So we're gonna do that. And then I think I have enough of my Syndapsis exotica cuttings here that have developed roots that we're gonna be able to do a four inch pot of these as well. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. I do need my epiphyte mix for that since both of these plants prefer the epiphytic type mix because they are epiphytic type plants. So I'm gonna get that mixed up real quick and then we're just gonna get these potted up. You guys, I'm just adding a little bit of soil in here to start. And then we are gonna add in our cuttings. I don't remember how many we have. Some of them already have multiple leaves and you can see those roots look super fabulous right there. So let's just see here. Yeah, I think that's a good level. So we're just gonna start setting them in here. And like I said, some of these don't have like quite as long of roots, but it's okay. They'll develop more here once we get them potted up. I am not worried about it. The one that we previously potted up is doing fabulous. So I'm just gonna keep adding these in here and then I'm just gonna fill this back in. same thing with the syndapsis cuttings and I will say that if you can see that look at that this is one of the fastest roots I've had develop when I've been propagating a syndapsis ever and I think it's because I added in my marble queen pothos cuttings with these cuttings when I started them and it definitely kick-started the root growth off so super excited about that we did end up with eight cuttings of micans in that pot we only have six of these, but I still think that's gonna make a nice full pot. So we're just gonna do the same thing here, get these added in, then fill it back in, water it down, and we'll be ready to move on to our next chore. Guys, now that we've got those two potted up, I've got our snips ready. They've been sterilized and we've got quite a few plants we need to cut. We need to trim my chordatum, philodendron chordatum that is in my bathroom. I think we're gonna propagate my linearis back into itself. I haven't totally, I'm totally decided yet, but looking at it, I mean, it's about to touch the couch. It needs to be cut. And I think I just wanna go try propagating it right back into the top. And I'll talk more about why when we get to that point. We do need to propagate uh, my philodendron Brazil as well as getting a little bit lanky looking. Let's see what else. Oh, brandy, philodendron brandy. Cause if you saw my house plant tour video and how scraggly she is looking, I don't know, we've got to get her looking better. So we're going to do that. And then we aren't exactly going to propagate my green maranta, but I do want to explain and show you guys something interesting 
that happened the other day. And I think it's something that happens to a lot of Marantas and people don't realize what's going on. So we're gonna take a look at that as well. Oh, and then we also need to cut the one vine that's on my Pearls and Jade Pothos that is starting to revert. Well, I mean, it's been reverting, but apparently I just didn't cut it high enough the last time we cut it to try to get it to start putting out more variegated leaves. So we're gonna be cutting it higher, which is good because the one propagation I have of it is just a single vine. So when we do do that one, I am going to get that propagating in water, but then when it's ready to go to soil, I'm just gonna plant it in with the other vine that I've already potted up like months ago. All right, I think that's it. So let's just go ahead and head into the bathroom first and do the philodendron chordatum. Okay, you guys, hopefully this lighting isn't too horrible in here, but as you can see, we have been growing super long we were about to grow into the Maranta again, and we started kind of trying to grow back up ourselves, I think maybe in an attempt not to grow into the Maranta, which, hold on you guys. Okay, I thought I might've seen spider mites on the Maranta for a second, but I think we're okay. I think, I really think. I think it's just dust. I need to dust this plant. We're gonna have to add that to the list of things to do, and she's kind of a pain in the butt to dust. But right now, let's go ahead and make our cuttings here. And we're just gonna take this up to about here where the other vines are as well. So I'm just gonna find a good node to cut below. And I am just gonna try to make sure that it's not somewhere I have cut or close to where I've cut before because typically there, that's gonna be a spent node. You aren't gonna be able to do anything with it. So let's see. I think we'll go right here. And then we're just gonna be tangled. So we're just gonna let that hang for now. And then let's see, let's get this one right here. And then our last one, I think we'll go right here. All right, so we're just gonna take these into the kitchen and get them cut into inch, ugh. I can talk. We're gonna take these into the kitchen and just get these cut into individual nodes and popped into some water so that they can start developing roots. Okay, guys, so I was gonna just trim Brandy where she is right now, but I kinda wanna be able to see like how she's looking up on the top as well, cause it's just hard to tell when she's hanging up this high. We have this really weird vine up here too that I'll show you when we bring her into the kitchen that's just like going straight up with only one tiny leaf on it. Like I said, she is just scraggly and we have gotta get her looking better. And I feel like I need to get her down from here and actually look at her more closely in the kitchen before I make any cuts. So let me grab her and just go take her into the kitchen. I did just go ahead and take the cordatum cuttings in there as well because I figured I'll just get everybody's cuttings in there and then we'll just finish cutting them up and putting them into water all at the same time. Okay, so I did get Brandy out of her cover pot and here's kind of what we're looking like up on top. And so I do think that some of these propagations we're gonna do off of her are gonna get planted back into the top here so that she can be more full because there are not like a ton of vines in there. So that's definitely the plan. And here's this one like crazy tall vine with just one little leaf on the end of it. Like I said, I mean, she drives me crazy, but we are going to try to strategically go in here and figure out what we're gonna trim and where we're gonna trim it. I just really wanna get rid of like bald vines at this point and let her try to grow back in without like having stuck leaves that don't come out. That's why these vines are bald is because she kept having leaves get stuck and then they would just shrivel up like that, I think is a shriveled up one. Anyways, so let's just get in here and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start cutting. All right, you guys, so if you can see like right here, we have three leaves that are decent looking and they're close together. And then we start to get into the scraggliness. So I'm gonna cut right below this last like good leaf on this vine. And that's probably what I'm gonna do on the rest of the vines as well. I'm not sure what I wanna do with this one. I don't know, I might leave this just for now because I don't want to cut too much off of her and you know, end up having her not have enough foliage to use up her water quick enough. So I think we're gonna stop there for today. Okay guys, so we are gonna trim the philodendron Brazil next. Once again, there's just some straggly longer vines compared to everything else. And it's maybe about a foot away, less than a little less than a foot away from hitting my tricolor ginger plant, my stromanthi trio star that is down here. So that's why I want to go ahead and give this gal a trim down. 
And also we are gonna be relocating this plant today. I wanna swap it around with some of my other hanging plants that are in brighter windows because I don't want the variegation to start to revert here because this is a north facing window. And this time of year, this plant's not getting like a ton of ton of light. So that's why I wanna rotate the plants around and then come spring or summer, I will rotate them back again. But we're gonna do that after we get all of these propagations in water. But let me get you in a little bit closer. Okay, so I think we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna cut this one probably right about here. And then let's see, there's the end of that one. Let's take this one up to, well, let me make sure I haven't cut anywhere near here again. No, we're good. So we're gonna take this one maybe to here. Let me think. Yep, that's pretty good, I think. So right here. And then once again, we'll get these broken up into individual nodes here in a bit. Okay, you guys, so on the Pearls and Jade Pothos here, so the Epiprimnum Orium Pearls and Jade, all of these green, like solid green leaves that you're seeing here, they're all coming off of the same vine. And we did cut it once before, right up in here where my finger is. So we have gotten one, two, three, four, five, six new leaves, and only one of them had some variegation on it. So I'm going to cut way higher up in here. I'm gonna to try to find a spot above where two variegated leaves were. And since it's gonna be pretty far up in there, I am gonna get you zoomed in a little bit closer so that you can see exactly where I'm gonna cut. Okay guys, we're gonna get everybody cut down into individual nodes and into water, and then I'm gonna to talk to you about what's going on with the green Maranta. So I want to show you something on here. So this is the Pearls and Jade Pothos cutting that we did. So spent nodes, let's talk about spent nodes. So right here is where we originally cut. So off of this growth point, we already had one growth point before we cut it. Now the node activated right here, the new growth point on the node activated and shot this out. So that's what we mean when we say a node is spent. This, is, this node in particular is not gonna put out any new growth. So if I were to cut here, cut here, stick this in water, it would probably develop roots, but it's never actually gonna get new growth on it. So I don't wanna cut this into its own node. I want to keep this piece attached to it because this does have a viable new growth point right here where we should get new growth. Now, that being said, this also has two growth points coming off of it. So same situation. If I was to cut this off, we're not gonna end up with new growth coming off of this, even if we did develop roots. However, this does have a viable growth point on it, this node. So that's why I wanna be strategic in how I am cutting this. So basically, we can either just stick this in water like this, which might be what I do, and let it root, and then it should either get a growth point off of here or up here or both. But if I separate out any of this middle section here, we're not gonna get any new growth. But I could potentially cut here. This will root and we'll get new growth here. This will root and we'll get new growth off of this. So, I don't know. I'm thinking I'm just gonna leave it like this and we're just gonna root it. We're gonna see what happens. And then later on, if I wanna cut it after it roots into two separate pieces, I can. guys real quick this plant smells weird like weird weird when I started cutting I was like what is this odor I mean hold on I don't know you guys I've never had a plant smell like this when I've cut into it if anybody else has propagated a philodendron brandy before and noticed that it smells very different than any other philodendron you have propagated comment down below and let me know but I'm gonna keep getting these cut up guys we are getting things crossed off the list which always makes me 
happy. So like I said, I'm gonna go grab the green Maranta here next and we'll talk about that. And then we're gonna do, I think, the Linearis that I talked about. All right, you guys, so I've got my beautiful green Maranta here. And I had mentioned to you guys in a video a while back, probably like six months or even longer than that ago, that new vines had finally started to push up out of this pot and they were producing much bigger leaves like you're seeing here. And so I kind of referred to it as this little baby Maranta because it was only like a little three inch plant when I got it, had started getting its big boy leaves and basically was starting to become like a teenager. Now it did still have its baby vines. It does still have one of its original baby vines here. You can see how small those leaves are. And basically the leaves on the original vine kept getting smaller and smaller like this. And then out of nowhere, it pushed out the new stalks that were producing the bigger leaves. I think this is just a process that Marantas go through, but something interesting happened the other day. I was watering this plant and one of the remaining baby vines just fell off. Like it just fell off in my hand. So let me go grab it because I did put it in water to propagate it and show you what I found interesting about it. And then I'm gonna show you even closer up on this baby vine because it's doing the same thing now. Okay guys, so here is the itty bitty baby vine that fell off, camera focus, there we go. And what is interesting is that it just fell off. And the reason I think it fell off is because it's already started to develop new rhizomes on it. And I am probably going to have to, let's see if the camera, oh yes, it's gonna focus, maybe, good. Right there, you see how that looks like maybe a new leaf coming out? That is new rhizome growth. And you can see there's some other places where that is happening as well. So this plant basically separated itself from the mother plant because it was already developing its own new offshoots. And I don't know if you guys can see, they're, they're not very big, but there are roots coming off of every single one of those rhizomes. They're really tiny. And actually my hand, they might be blending in with the color of my hand. There you go. You see them there, just tiny little roots. And so, yeah, this has already got, we've got the original vine here, and then we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four new rhizomes shooting off. So that will be four new vines. So this will be five vines eventually. And once it has enough roots, I will pot it up and then it will go through the same process. These leaves will probably start to get bigger now, but then eventually they'll start getting smaller again. It'll shoot up new growth out from the soil and move into like its teenage phase of life. But let me get you in close, like I said, on the mama plant because I looked at it yesterday or no, I guess it was two days ago now. And it looks like that vine is about to just fall off like this one did on its own. And if it is, we're gonna go ahead and pop it in some water as well. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. You see how loose this looks here? This is that last remaining vine that was the original vine. And if you can see down here, what's hanging off down here at the bottom, these two little offshoots here, these are new rhizomes that are pushing out and they're gonna try to develop new leaves on their own. So my hunch is, that we might just pop off. If we don't pop off, I think we might actually go ahead and remove this one and pop it into some water so those rhizomes can actually do their own thing. So let's see. All right, we aren't totally just falling off yet like the other one, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut right here and we'll take a closer look at those rhizomes and then we'll pop it in some water. So it might be hard to tell here, and I don't know how close it's gonna let me get before it decides not to focus, but there's actually eight new rhizomes coming off of this plant. There's one way up here at the top. There's a little one coming off there. You see the longer ones coming off at the bottom. And then over here on this side, there's more long ones coming off as well. And you can see that they're trying to develop new leaves down there at the bottom. So this is gonna produce a bunch of new vines and be a great little baby Maranta propagation. So let's get this guy into some water. Actually, you guys have changed my mind. I think I'm gonna wait to do the Linearis. I think first I wanna go ahead and rotate around those hanging plants that I was talking about so that the one that's in the north facing window isn't running a risk of like reversion. So let's do that really quick. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the donkey's tail, which is right behind you hanging in the kitchen window, the southeast window. We're gonna move that to behind the couch because it, it needs a lot of light. It's not gonna handle a north facing window well at all. So we'll put it behind the couch. We'll take the Syndapsis pictus exotica that's behind the couch. 
move it to the dining room window, the north facing window, and then we're gonna take the Philodendron Brazil and hang it behind you where the donkey's tail was. Guys, while I'm doing this, I am making a mental note that this plant right here is going to need to be watered way more frequently now that it is in this window. And the Syndapsis pictus exotica is going to need to be watered way less frequently now that it is in that north facing window. So it's going to take a few weeks for me to figure out the regular watering time frame for these plants now, but that's okay. It's just how it is when you move your plants around. Okay, so the lighting up here right now is awful but as you can see the linearis is excessively long so i'm gonna grab her off of here bring her into the kitchen and we'll see about propagating her back into herself all right you guys so all i'm gonna do is i want to get this longer bit kind of up to the same level as this so i'm gonna trim up here and then we're gonna trim some of these into more additional pieces and like i said we're just gonna plant them back up in the top but first let's get these initial long bits cut off of here Okay, so she's definitely gonna be hanging more evenly now when we put her back behind the couch. So let's go ahead and get close up on the top of this and start adding our cuttings back in. All right, you guys, so I did just cut these into basically three node cuttings and I removed the lowest two leaves off of each one so that we can bury that part down in the soil. Now this is my epiphyte mix. So these are potentially going to want to pop out real easily. That's one of the reasons I didn't want them to be too long. But because it's my epiphyte mix, we should have a pretty easy time digging a hole in there with my metal chopstick and sticking these down into there. So I'm just gonna work through this. Oh, and just in case you guys didn't know, Hoyas do produce a milky sap when you cut into them. I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but you see how it's kind of dripping that white bit? That can be irritating to some people's skin. So try to avoid getting that on your skin or maybe wear gloves if you are a sensitive skin person. But let's get all of these up in here. And then I think I'm gonna give this plant a water down because it is about ready to be watered. And that way we'll get these cuttings off to the right start. left in here to put two. So ideally I would want to break this up into two and not leave it this long. It'll still probably work at this length, but because I don't have room to really put two more in here, we're just gonna put this one in here in this last spot like this. guys well I definitely think this is going to help this linearis to be much more full as those grow out so I'm super excited about that like I said this plant is almost in need of watering normally I probably would have waited until maybe tomorrow but because we just did put those in there and it is that close to needing to be watered I'm going to go ahead and water it down if it didn't need watering if it was still really moist I wouldn't do that and then this is should work like just planting these in here because this is such a small pot it's only a three inch pot and so I would not have done it this way if this was a bigger pot especially say for example like a six inch pot I would have tried to root these in water first 
and then have added them into the plant after they actually got roots, putting them kind of as far down into that pot as I could. But like I said, this should work, but of course I will keep you updated. So I'm gonna go get this plant watered down and then let's check our list after that and see what else we can cross off, first of all, because I love crossing things off my to-do list. I don't know about you guys, but it's like the highlight of my day being able to cross that thing off the to-do list. And sometimes if I do things that weren't on my to-do list, a little secret, you guys, I will add them to my to-do list, even though they're already done, just so I can cross it off of my to-do list. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Any of you do that? Comment down below and let me know. But yeah, let me get her taken care of and then grab the list. Okay, so we've done the green Maranta. We've done the Linearis. Um, oh, let's take care of this real quick. This I've been needing to do for a while. Let me grab the cyclamen. All right, you guys. So I feel like I've been doing a lot of close-ups and not really talking to you like face-to-face -face, as it were throughout this video. So let me just scoot in here in this awkward angle for a moment and we will talk about what we're about to do here. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be trimming the spent flowers off of this cyclamen. And for the record, you guys, usually I am very good about removing spent flowers like as soon as they're spent. But I don't know, I think because I went out of town and I was playing catch up after I got back into town. And so I've been a little bit behind on things and there are a lot of spent flowers on this plant. But the reason you want to cut them off, there's actually two reasons. So a lot of plants that we don't like their flowers, you want to cut them off so that the plant just isn't putting energy into like keeping this stem here alive, right? Now, if it's also a plant where the flowers aren't pretty, you wanna just cut them off anyway, because they aren't pretty, obviously. But once again, you just don't need the plant expending energy on something you don't want it to expend energy on, or that it doesn't need to expend energy on. Now, on a plant like this that we want to keep flowering because it has beautiful flowers, by removing these spent ones, you're freeing up energy for the plant to produce even more beautiful new flowers. So that's why we're gonna be trimming these off and that's why really you wanna to try to stay on top of removing any flowers on your plants once they are spent. But let me flip back around behind you and we will get this done. Okay, you guys, so when we're doing this, we wanna get as low to the base as possible to cut these flowers off. So I'm just gonna slip up in here and we are gonna remove a, this one. So I'm just gonna get down in here, get that one off, let's get this one off and sometimes they are kind of twisting around each other like this one is over here but the base of it is like over there on the other side but still want to try to get as close to the base as possible we may need to rotate so this one where is the base there it is and then we got a little one over here Actually, we've got a bunch of them over here. Well, actually, once again, these are growing over from the other side. So weird how that happens sometimes. One down here. I don't even know where you're growing from. There we go. Get this one. And I think that might be it. Let's rotate and see if we see any more. Oh, one more. We almost missed one right here. All right. And that ought to do it. So I'm gonna get this plant put back and we will see what's up next. I totally forgot to cross off Move the Hanging Plants a second ago. Shame on me. That is done. And now we've removed, where is it? Spin flowers off the cyclamen. Um, you know what? Let's, well, first of all, I have repot the Glauca, my Pilea Glauca on here. We're not actually gonna do that today because I checked it earlier and it's still too wet from recently being watered. I want it to be a little bit more dried out before I repot it. So we're just gonna, you know, pretend that's not there. And let's actually take care, this is this pot up basil. This might be confusing you guys because you've never seen me with any edible plants. So let me go, well, let's go look at where this is currently and I'll explain the story to you. Okay, so story behind this is that my friend who's staying with me right now, who just moved back, well, I guess it's been almost three months now that she moved, since she moved back from Hawaii. She actually had been growing some Thai basil in Hawaii, and according to her sister who still lives there, it has turned into a giant basil bush. 
So she did have some takeout food that had Thai basil in it a little while back. There was a decent sized sprig in it and so she decided to go ahead and propagate it. And it does have enough roots now to be potted up. And I just noticed when I took it down that it is totally flowering. I don't know if you guys can see those flowers on there, but that kind of surprised me. But anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and get this potted up for her real quick. And this is actually the first like edible plant I've ever had growing in this household. So that's exciting. But let's go back into the kitchen. All right, you guys, my friend actually just came home. She was out apartment hunting. Sounds like apartment hunting did not go that fabulously, but I'll have to catch up with her a little bit later tonight on all of that, because we've got to finish getting this stuff done first. And I am planning on going to work out tonight, fingers crossed, assuming we get as much done as we can before I have to leave. And it is almost already three o'clock. I'm like looking at the clock, like where did the time go? I have no idea. But I asked her, I told her that we were potting up her plant and she was like, oh, can I help? I was like, do you want to be on the video? That's fine. And she was like, mm, maybe not. So we're going to be doing this for her. I do have just a little three inch pot that we're going to be putting this in. This just needs my basic mix. So once again, this is just four part, sorry, five parts premium potting soil, one part perlite or pumice. And once again, we're going to do what we did earlier. We're just going to get the dirt started in here, add this guy in, get him positioned backfill it in and then give it a water down. But let me bring you guys in a little bit closer for that. Look how nice those roots look, you guys. Plenty of roots for this plant to get started off with. So this plant should really start to kick out tons of new growth as soon as we get this potted up. Okay, back to our list, you guys. So we've potted up the basil. The next thing I do wanna do is check on the string of bananas because I need to look and see if the spider mites are for sure gone or not. And if they aren't, we need to give it another spray down. So that's super important. And then after that, I think we are going to maybe hang the sedum daisy phylum that is in my bedroom that I was mentioning in my plant tour video that I need to get hung. And I'm just gonna show you guys kinda what I do to easily hang those while we do that. But first, let's go check on that string of bananas. Okay, guys, so I am seeing some speckling on some of these leaves. It's gonna be hard to see on camera, but you can see how many bananas we lost. Like, I'm very depressed about it. But I'm seeing some speckling so there could still be spider mites. I'm not like actually seeing any. I just grabbed my magnifying glass too and I'm not seeing any, but this plant definitely needs watering, which shocked me because I, with all the bananas it's lost, I would think that it would be taking way longer between waterings, but it actually is way less time since the last time I watered it. And since it does need water, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna water it in the shower and give it a good spray down to try to dislodge any bugs. And then once it dries later, I will spray it down. I probably, won't be filming that because it's probably gonna take a while for this to dry. It'll probably be dark by the time I need to spray it down, but we'll see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll film it, maybe I won't, but just know that's what's gonna happen. But right now we're just gonna give it a wash down and a water down in the shower. And guess we decided to come partake in shower time as well, because how dare the plant get a shower and not Toby crazy cat. But anyways, you guys, the plant will be hanging here drying for however long it takes it to dry. And then, like I said, I will give it another pest spray down and hopefully that will be the last one. Okay, so we're going to grab this guy now and I did thoroughly wash my hands before I'm gonna grab this guy just to make sure I don't have any spider mites on me. Okay, guys, so what I've been doing with hanging plants like this that are in nursery pots, like you've seen some of the ones we've rearranged today are in cover pots. Some of them don't exactly fit in their cover pots, but for ones that are a little bit more sensitive, like the donkey's tail, like this sedum, even though once again, this is way less sensitive than the donkey's tail, but it's still at risk of losing a bunch of leaves if I'm trying to take it in and out of like a hanging planter, cover pot, macrame situation. And because eventually it's gonna vine and hide the plastic cover pot, or sorry, plastic nursery pot, I kind of gotten to the point where I'm just like, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And what I've been doing is I've just been using an awl, looks kind of like a ice pick, if y'all aren't familiar with what an awl is. I used to do framing when I was first out of high school. That was like my job. And yeah, I had to use this all the time. But anyway, so I'm gonna use this to poke a hole or several holes in the pot. 
And then I've got some craft string. This is the same craft string we used. When did we use this? Oh, when we were trying to tame my Alocasia cupra, cupria into staying upright. But anyway, so I just use this, tie it through the holes I create and then tie it together at the top to hang it. And I think that looks fine. Like for now, you know, maybe I'll do something fancier later, but right now I just want to get it off of Toby's house in the bedroom and hanging up in that window so that it has room to trail without having to like drag across whatever it's sitting on. All right, you guys, so this one's probably gonna be a little bit harder for me to poke holes in because as you can see, like I can't see the edge of the pot. So I've got to find myself some kind of opening. And actually you guys, now that I'm like in here, like I don't even know how I'm gonna be able to feed the string through because it's so like close to the, okay, here we have space right here. We could definitely, but once again, look how tight that is. Like, how am I going to get the string through there without like having an issue? I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. This guy might have to go into a decorative cover pot or a macrame thing or something. I don't know. Okay, hold on, you guys. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to make a little bit. I mean, it's not going to be anything fancy, you guys. I don't know how to macrame. But we're gonna try to make a hanging planter situation with this. So let's see how this goes. I'm just gonna start by like unwrapping some of this and I'm gonna set the plant on this if it will not hold on to it. And I think we're gonna do it like this. Hopefully that is centered. And you know how the pot has like the openings on the bottom, the little grooves that you can see there. I'm just trying to get it into those. So that way I kind of know it's in the center. It's not in this one, there we go. So it's there and I can tell it's there cause I can move it back and forth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to feed this between the vines. And basically I'm gonna take it up like this and then I'm gonna do another one the other direction and just tie them together at the top. And let's just see if that'll work for now. Cause I don't really care about this string that much. So if I water this like, and it gets this all over it, like that's not gonna be a problem for me. So I'm just gonna work at this and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, you guys, I've got this one. You can't see the full length of it, but I've got it cut to the length I want. So now I'm just going to lay another one across the counter to the same length and cut it before I run it under the other side. Okay, they're both in there. I am losing some leaves, but most of them that are falling off here are like dead ones. I'm trying to be as gentle as I can. It's definitely nowhere near what would be happening if we were doing with the, this with the donkey's tail. So at least that's good. But I think I'm gonna zoom back out so you guys can see better how I'm gonna do the top of this. Okay, you guys, so I've got those under there and they are free moving or they were until this one just got a little bit off. Hold on. Get yourself back in your groove. Okay, there we go. That one's free moving. This one's free moving. So what we're gonna do is we've got our blank spot over here, so that's easy. So we're gonna take this up and then I'm gonna try to pull this one carefully around the vines to get it flush to the side of the pot without hurting anybody. Let's see. Oh, there's like a random little tiny vine in the way. Okay, I think I got around it. All right. So there's that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this one together. Then we're gonna tie the other one together and then we're gonna tie them to each other, I think. And hopefully, hopefully this works because it's, it's, it's the best I got right now. We had to get a little impromptu, but that's what you gotta do sometimes. All right. So that is tied off. Just kind of rest that there for a second. Do the same thing with this one. Try to find some space between the vines so it's not crushing any vines. It's just resting against the pot. There's a big leaf that just fell off. I am just dropping the good leaves that fall off back in to the pot because they will root and start to produce even more vines. And I probably should have had on my to-do list to trim the aerial roots off of this plant today too because it definitely needs it. But once again, we're running slightly out of time in the day, so we will have to see what we can do. Let's see. Uh, I don't know where to go on this one. 
There's a lot of vines in the way. Okay, maybe right there. We probably are gonna lose a few when I try to straighten this out on that side, but that's okay. It'll grow itself back in. Got a little off over here, so. All right, I think we're back in business. So let's get these even. And then we'll tie these off. I'm gonna try to tie them off at about the same spot as I just did the other one. If I can get it through here. Okay, that might not be the exact same length, but whatever. We're doing our best, people. And actually, I don't really need to tie these to each other if I don't want to. I could just hang it from both, probably. Let's just pick it up and see if it's level. Oh, that's pretty dang good. All right, so it's level, so I might just leave them like this, but I do need to like double knot this situation or else it's gonna come undone. So let me just do that real quick and then we will take this into the bedroom and get it hung up. Actually guys, before we do that, we need to grab one of these nifty hooks that I bought and I will make sure these are linked in my Amazon store and the link to that store is in the description down below. But I bought these to hang over the curtain rods and they fit perfectly. They match the coloring of the curtain rods and it just makes it a lot easier to hang and remove plants off of curtain rods. So definitely check out the link for that, but let's go into the bedroom now and get it hung. All right, you guys, I think that works for and now. I mean, I'm definitely happy that it's not sitting on Toby's house anymore. And guess who else is super happy it's not sitting on Toby's house anymore? Toby! He Tobes. Okay, so back to our list. We have checked the string of bananas. I'm actually gonna add to the bottom here spray spring of, spring, string of bananas. We'll just call that S-O-B because that's kind of how I feel when I saw the uh, spider mites on there, son of a bitch. Anyways, so we're gonna spray that or I'm gonna spray that tonight. Like I said, I will probably have let you guys um, go by that point because it is now almost 3.45. We did just hang the sedum, so that is done. I have on here to move alocasia and what I really mean is the black velvet one in the kitchen because I did mention in my plant tour video that I feel like it needs more light this time of year, but I really don't know where I'm gonna put it right now. So I think we're gonna save this for a different day, hence why, you know, it has a question mark for a reason, you guys. Question mark for a reason. I knew we might not do it today. Check the Baltic blue to see if it needs to be repotted. We might still do that, but if it needs to be repotted, I don't think we're gonna be doing it today. And the only other thing we had on our list was to stake up the Monstera because of, like I mentioned also in the plant tour video, it is sort of starting to kind of hit the ground in one side on one side of it. But this is gonna require me to go buy some wooden dowels and everything. So we definitely aren't gonna have time for that today. So that will have to be on a different day, but let's check the Baltic blue real quick just to see if it actually needs to be repotted. Okay guys, we are getting to the point in the day where the sun is starting to hit directly on the island here. I usually don't film this late for that reason, but let's go ahead and get this checked real quick. I just grabbed this wooden crate that used to have wine in it. So I hopefully don't make too big of a mess. Not like I haven't already been making a mess. I mean, I don't know why I always say, oh, I hope I don't make too big of a mess. I'm always making a mess. So let's see if we can gently get this out of here. It is like a bunch of different vines that I know were not fully rooted cuttings when I first got it. But just a reminder, you guys, the reason I wanna check this is because you can see there are a ton of roots coming through those drainage holes, so. Hopefully they don't give me crap when I try to take it out. Sometimes when you have too many roots coming through the drainage holes, you can't get it out very easily because they just kind of try to grab on. Squeeze it a little bit more to get it a little bit more loosened up here. <laughs> Having a hard time getting my hand in here to grab things without feeling like I'm going to pull vines out of the soil. All right, come on, you. Okay, it's feeling pretty loose. Yeah, I'm not gonna take it all the way out, you guys. I could see when I lifted it up a little bit, it has a lot of roots coming through the bottom and it's probably getting a bit root bound down here, but there's like not much at all up here at the top. So we don't need to repot it yet. 
I kind of had a suspicion when I started tugging and the soil felt that loose because if it was severely root bound, it kind of tightens up all the soil and makes it kind of easier to get it out and not be dumping soil everywhere. So we're probably good to go until at least springtime on this guy. So let me just get his dirt put back in him and get him put back in his home. All right, you guys, well, thanks for coming along with me today as I got all of these chores done. I mean, I can't really believe I had this much to do. And I feel like there's probably other things that I forgot about that I need to do too. So we might have another planty chores video in the not too distant future, but I really hope you enjoyed coming along today. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Aloha.